I've said many times that, that, that if you get to be 65 or 70 and later, and, and the people that you want to have love you actually do love you, you're a success. I've never seen anybody that reaches that age. I mean, I'm not talking about somebody that's in extreme poverty or pain or something, but I've never seen anybody that, if they have a lot of people that, that love them, that is other than happy. And I've seen some very, very wealthy people that they give testimonial dinners to and name schools after and everything. And nobody, nobody loves them. By far the best investment you can make is in yourself. I mean, that, for example, communication skills. I tell the students that come that they're going to graduate schools and business and they're learning all these complicated formulas and all that. If they just learn to communicate better, both in writing and in person, they increase their value at least 50%. You know, I mean, it, it, uh, if you can't communicate, somebody says, you know, it's like winking at a girl in the dark. Nothing happens, you know, basically. And, and you have to be able to get get forth your ideas and uh, and that's that's relatively easy I did it myself with the Dale Carnegie course some people wish I'd taken a shorter course now in terms of my talking later on but it, it it's just hugely important and you, if you invest in yourself nobody can take it away from you I mean you, you and uh, the second thing which I'll get a certain criticism for not living it but but I do tell the those students you know that if I gave you a car and it'd be the only car you get the rest of your life, you'd take care of it like you can't believe it. Any scratch you'd fix that moment, you'd read the owner's manual, you'd keep a garage and do all these things. And you get exactly one mind and one, and one body in this world. And, and you can't start taking care of it when you're 50. By that time, you'll have rusted out if you haven't done anything. So you, you, should, you should really be sure that you just remember that you've just got one mind and body to get through life with and to, to do the most with it. Well, life advice is, uh, you know, the most important thing, uh, aside from the things I've talked about already, is, is really who you associate with. You want to associate with people that are better than you are. I mean, basically, you'll go in the direction of the people that you associate with. And, and you want to have the right heroes. Uh, you want people, if you want to emulate somebody, you better pick very carefully who you want to emulate. And, uh, and when, Obviously, you can't pick your parents. Uh, uh, they're going to have an enormous influence on you, but you don't get a choice on that. But you get choices as you go down the line, and you, uh, who you, uh, who you admire, who you, who you, who you want to copy, and the most important for most people in terms of that decision is their spouse. It's also important in terms of a partner in business, but the partner in life is is, is the most important. One. You, you want to pick a spouse that's. Little, little better than you are, <laughs> and then he or she, and, hope, and you hope they don't f figure it out too fast. <laughs> now at 86, I mean, I, I've seen a lot of people that have gotten older, and I've never seen anybody that is 70 or pick an, pick an age who felt good about their children that felt bad about their life. You know, in, in all my experience, I've seen plenty of people with lots of money that where it hasn't worked out well in the family. They and, didn't feel good about their children. And, 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 well, or the children didn't feel good about them. <laughs> you know? I mean, but whichever way, I mean, but it, it, in other words, they failed at the most important teaching job they had in personal relationship. And and sometimes it happens for extraneous reasons, but but I, would, I really have never met anybody, regardless of their economic circumstances, who felt their life was a failure. And I knew one fellow was extraordinarily rich. He put a lot of money in his kid's name. He didn't didn't want them to have any control over it. Once a year, he would have dinner with them and try and get them to sign their income tax return in blank. Now, just imagine that, you know, with in this case, four kids, none of them, he, he wanted to have enough confidence in them or to have, it, it, it's just crazy. I mean, they he would woo them during this dinner and they knew exactly what was going on and once a year and the, you know, and then he'd bribe them sort of to sign their income tax return in blank so he could file and they wouldn't know what they had. I mean, that when you, you have adults, I've seen just time after time when people have been successful. And I've seen plenty of the other two, but but successes at business and failure. And I don't think they feel that good about life. 
most greatest satisfaction is just staying in good health. I mean, when you're 86, I mean, yeah, yeah, you look at this a little differently. I mean, I enjoy every day. The problem of trade uh, is that the benefits are diffused and invisible. So you don't walk in and buy a pair of shoes or some underwear or anything, and it says you just saved 12% because this was purchased somebody. So 320 million people are buying things. The bananas come from <laughs> Central. They're buying things cheaper than they would otherwise. But the, the harmful effects, taking somebody out of a job they've had for 25 years when they it's too late to retrain them or anything, they're very specific and terrible. Now, what you want to figure out a way is to keep the societal benefits and take care of the people that, that really are the, you know, they, they're the roadkill, basically, in this. And there will be roadkill. I mean, there's no sense kidding yourself. I mean, we have a text, we started with a textile mill at Berkshire. Half our workers only spoke Portuguese. You know, they worked in hot conditions, loud conditions, and they spent 20 or 25 years on looms. When textiles moved elsewhere, their lives, economic lives were ruined. And that is going to happen. That is part of, of, of trade. And the benefits, you know, if somebody buys whatever textiles we were turning out, you know, handkerchiefs or anything, they may buy them a little cheaper. And we've got to keep the trade benefits everybody, us and them. As a society, it penalizes certain people terribly. And we've got to take care of the people that are getting hurt because we've got the resources. And to take do it. care means what? It means that somehow you have to have some kind of, you've got to have retraining and all that when that's feasible. But but it isn't feasible when you only speak Portuguese and you're in New Bedford and you're 55 years old and you spent your whole life on a loom. You've got to make sure that person has an income that's commensurate. We can do it as a society. And we don't want to, we don't want to let the individual case prejudice against trade benefits everybody, but we also don't want to say because everybody's benefit, you know, to hell with this guy. And we're rich, we can afford that and, and we should do it. And that's how we'll get a good trade policy. Overall, in aggregate, our society will be far richer 10, 20, 30 years ago. And if you just take an aggregate, our children will live better. The real question is, is will it continue to leave lots of people behind? And a specialized market system will leave people behind. <clears throat> there, there is, if somebody is, however you want to measure it, 10% below average, there, there are opportunities in this, in this world today have not improved at all, you know, from 30 or 40 years ago. Or, and well, the classic situation is you, you take the Forbes 400 in 1982. Number one guy was Dan Ludwig, no, <laughs> your yeah. viewers have never heard of him. And he had $2 billion. You know? Yeah, I, or, yeah or now, you? I mean, you know, now that the, it'd be 30 or 40 times that. I mean, 30 or 40 times. And, and this, a high, more highly specialized economy year after year, different from that agrarian economy of 200 years ago, it's going to be more and more people at the very top winning big, big, big time. And it really won't do absent certain types of programs. It won't do much for the person that really doesn't have any special skills for the market. The, 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 the average person or slightly below average person in terms of particularly market talents is not going to do very well unless unless we have policies to make sure that they participate in some way. And the guys at the top policies are going to keep government. doing better. Pardon me? Policies from it government. It has to be government. Government yeah. is always, I mean, the market system is this traffic cop. It directs resources, it directs brains, and it does, and it does a great job of it. But if it, it also directs all the winnings that will continually favor more people at the top. Government's always in, I mean, government came in with social security and government, you know, redirects uh, the winnings. So it isn't totally the market system that delivers the winnings, but I don't want to kill the market system in terms of producing things <laughs> at all. We want more and more stuff, but there will be more and more people falling further relatively behind. And that's not, that's not a good result. I mean, we, we can afford it, we can do better. And in this country, if you took the Ford 400, they had $93 billion in 1982, and they have 2.4 trillion now. 25 times as much, not exactly the same people, but take the 400, 25 times as much as 35 years ago. And believe me, that, that does not strike 
somebody that's working 40 hours a week and trying to support a couple of kids on it and finding, you know. The, the, and, and that their income has remained the same or be is less and, and, or. They, 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 they just aren't participating. Or they're threatened by forces they can't comprehend. They, 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 they can't. The market system just pays more and more. Just just think, say you're a say you're a middleweight boxer, you know. I mean in the thirties you were limited to you know, you wouldn't even get on the undercard at Madison Square Garden and it was limited. But then television comes along and cable comes along and pay-per-view and tens and tens of millions of dollars. So at the top, it's terrific. But if you're the forty-fifth best middleweight in the country, it's pretty much the same as it used to be in the thirty. So the spread gets wider. If, if you're Frank Sinatra, you're a lot better off if you've got television than if you can just play at some theater in, in New York, like where you started. You know, it, it it's magnified. But throughout, I mean, if you've got a good business idea, you can get it capitalized and become worth billions Easier just today. on the idea. So it, it, it uh, it's just tougher. Whereas you know, you go back to 1800, and if you were, if you were reasonably strong and willing to work hard, you were worth 90% as much on a farm as the very best guy. <laughs> you know, it just uh, the differential, it, and it'll keep widening. The market system will push it in that direction, and, but it's government is there to. What would you change if but, you could? Well, I, I would change the earned income tax credit big time. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, I just you know, I, I am where I am not by myself at all. I mean, there's 320 million Americans out there and there's a lot of crosses over at Normandy and everything else, you know. And uh, it just, I benefit enormously by having come along when I came along and where I came along. And, and some people did and some people didn't. And there's nothing wrong with a market system that rewards anybody that makes life better for millions of people. They ought to get enormously rewarded. But you got to take care of the people that, that just don't fit well into that particular niche. I mean, if, if this country paid off based on athletic ability, you know, I mean, I could I could study eight hours a day and, you know, and, and have all these coins. And, you know, I'm still going to, you know, I'll get in the ring or something like that. And 10 seconds later, I'm on my back, you know. So it, it, no, it's it, right. the talents that get rewarded in the market system are important because they bring us more of the goods and services that the country wants and they make all kinds of improvements in how we live. Just incredible. But they leave, they leave people behind and it won't be solved simply by education. A 2% growth rate, if we have a little less than 1% population growth, which we probably will, in one generation, 25 years now, people have kids a little later, uh, will add 19,000 per capita, family of four, 76,000 to real GDP. So there will be 70, family of four, on average, there would be 76,000 more stuff per family of four in one generation. I mean, we are going to have more and the golden go the goose is going to keep laying more golden eggs. I mean, and we've got a wonderful system.